Hi, ever wonder what it's like to work another profession or live in the underworld? Listen to Unsuspecting Riders give a 10 to 15 minute personal masterclass as I spontaneously interview them as they enter my taxi. I'm your host, Simon Rushton, and this is Taxi Chronicles. Okay. Yeah. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another episode and another rider. Today we have a runner. His name's Ross, and he sounds. He's probably run just as much miles as I have, and I've run a lot. If you know me, I've run a lot. So, welcome you up. Welcome to. Ha- nice to have you here today, Ross. Hey, good to be here. So tell us before we go into the running thing. We've got a bit of time. What kind of person were you were when you were at school? <laughs> um. I was an absolute nightmare. Oh. I was, yeah, just like, you know, <laughs> every teacher's nightmare pupil, to be honest. Too too much energy, no attention. Um, yeah, just not, not not great. But the, the physical side, like, you know, PE, as it was called. Um, yeah, loved that. That was, that was, you know, kind of what I was okay. good at. And, you know, the, those teachers didn't mind me because... <laughs> It was fine to have lots of energy yeah. and be, you know, right. yeah. So when did you realise you all find a love for running? Um, yeah, probably around the same time, so school. So um, we used to do quite a lot of cross country there. We, you know, we, the school was fairly, fairly rural. So there was plenty of good hills and like mud, muddy fields and stuff. So yeah, we had a good PE teacher he you know pushed us with the running so yeah probably about age 11 getting into doing like a bit more seriously then so your first real race or run was the cross country run yeah that was first, yeah first race was that yeah and do you remember what position you came um i think i was kind of like middle of the pack really okay. and i think it's kind of how it's continued for me is that, that i I do just love the process of it. I like, I like just, you know, being out in nature and running. Really, it's like I've never kind of been driven to like I've got to win this race. I've got to do that. You know, um, you're running I, for you. Yeah, for me. I mean, I'd be lying if I said that. You know, if you see someone and you're not like, I'm going to drop that person, and you know, and then <laughs> yeah. thinking a bit more strategically, yeah. like, well, you know, going for like a negative split and just hanging back and not, you know. But then a lot of that, I think doing stuff for you helps because if you're just so driven and focused on you have to be out of in front on longer races I think that's a bit of a, a hindrance because you know unless you've really got that stamina to kind of maintain that for the whole race I know some can't can't they but um yeah so yeah I'd be lying if I said I'm, I'm not competitive but it's not like the main thing for me would you also say it's why you run because when um so we, how do you mean? I, to expand on that, for myself, sometimes I run because I want to get fitter. Sometimes I yeah. run because I want to punish myself because I've been eating loads of crap. Yeah. And other times I run, I just just kind of want to free my mind. Yeah. Not worry about anything. Just find a forest, whether it's three in the morning or wherever. Just yeah, run. yeah. I hate running on tarmac and pavements. I hate it. Yeah, yeah. I agree with all those statements. Yeah, I run I for all the same reasons. And yeah, if you can have. If, I, so I find it. So I moved to London about eight years ago now. Prior to that, I was in Manchester. So, you know, half an hour drive, you can be in the Peak District. There's a really good area called Edale. Mm-hmm. There's really good fell running around there. And there's a lot of. A lot of good fell races and routes and it's there's a big community of of you know that kind of running around there and the history of it just for the um, listeners can you explain what fell fell is yeah so f- fell running i mean i suppose now from the, the hipster sort of american movement side of it now it'd be called like trail running you know but fell running kind of started you know way back i think it's like you know over 100 years ago in the uk where you'd have these community fairs you know, like village fairs in these rural villages, and they would just be like, you know, put money on a couple of runners, go right, my guy can beat your guy to the top of the mountain and back. Okay. So it's basically running up a hill, 
running back down as fast as you can. That was fell running, and then it kind of grew into you know long sort of races across like you know mountain and more tops and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so there's a big history of that in that area, mm-hmm. and a friend of mine who he was doing like adventure races, you know, obstacle races and stuff, and we just sort of fancied mixing it a bit up, getting a bit bored of running, mm-hmm. and we're like, well, let's just you know, let's just go up there, you know, onto the the moors, onto the Peak District, or into the Peak District, and just try it out. And it was really cold, really wet, and it was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like I I, I like that side of it you know what i what i find is you can get really wet but if your main body is warm Mm. you can crack on yeah 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 that's that's it it's quite nice feeling comfortable in that environment because Mm -hmm. like you you, like say you you're pushing at enough of a pace that you just keeping that temperature Mm -hmm. you know and obviously you have to take precautions you know having stuff with you if you roll your ankle and you can't run you cool down really really quick mm-hmm. you know um yeah. but yeah yeah I, I i really missed it when i moved to london um and so now i just try and find the greener spaces that i can find to really to run on but you just have to be a bit creative really in yeah. london <laughs> yeah no that's true i think i used to live in stratford and that was great for running because oh, okay. it was next to olympic park yeah heading around so there you had the forest you had the marshes brilliant you had the canals yeah yeah and running around the canals at uh, like 12 at night on your own. Yeah. Oh, it's superb. Put your headphones on a podcast or something. Yeah. And you're just gone. I was like, started listening to music when I first started running. Then, because of some races, they basically prohibited it because they couldn't close the roads for all of it. So I had to kind of get used to running without music and then did that for years. But now, whilst I've been trying to get myself back into it, I now listen to podcasts. Yeah. It's a great, like you say, it's just great to sort of tune out and just you can get a good one. Get your running. Yeah, yeah, it's great it's when you get to that yeah. kind of well flow state, they call it, where you just that's it. It doesn't feel like effort. Uh, you just fly along, and mm-hmm. then you know you're listening to interesting stuff at the same time, and yeah, mm-hmm. it's uh, yeah, it's great. What? Oh, sorry, this is wrong. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Um, I was just taking a wrong turn. Um, what did he get? Let's get on. No, um, no, not too bad. That was good. Good <laughs> multi Ah, there's yeah. someone blocking us. Yeah. Um, what's your wall? What um, mileage do you hit a wall, and how do you get through that? Uh, I, it d- depends really into you know how how fit I am and you know what my eating's been like. But yeah, typically, typically it would be around. You know the traditional sort of like what 22 miles to say isn't it in a marathon you sort of tend to hit the wall okay. sort of between 22 and 24 miles i tend to find it's yeah it's around around that um but again it depends so for example i went for a 10k this morning and okay. i just you know i'd slept well i thought i'd eaten well but i just felt everything felt a lot heavier and just wasn't feeling it so yeah actually you know just stopped halfway listened to some thing you know sent a few emails used the time just to recover a bit and then carried on so that was a bit of an anomaly and i was trying to think through what was different but i don't know sometimes it's just you have those days where you just you feel like you're three times as heavy and you know just everything feels harder mm-hmm. you know but, um yeah i'd say when i'm fit it's the usual sort of around 22 miles really i find that strange in the sense that for myself as a runner i have like a four or six mile wall okay then a 13 mile wall okay yeah and yeah and i don't usually go and I, I deal with miles being it's military yeah yeah so i don't really um think but i, I haven't run too many marathons mm-hmm. I, I did the marathon and a commando test which is emotional oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah Going through, going through um, the long moor and everything, yeah. but yeah, it's just it's an interesting one. Have you seen about the different styles of running, positioning your body? Yeah, yeah, so I'm big into that. So um, yeah, I'd, I've kind of gravitated to be more of a midfoot strike, but you know, I was doing more of a forefoot strike and minimal shoes. You know, just building up all the musculature and your 
your feet really and your, your legs kind of take the impact. Um, and yeah, I, I actually found they had a problem, like a recurring injury, I had a, an IT band problem where my knee would just seize up after, you know, mm -hmm. it's worse after like a couple of kilometers, wouldn't be able to run. And then the only thing that was able to sort of recover me from it was actually doing like four foot strike and you know mm -hmm. keeping it like that not letting it fall back um so yeah you know i'm a, a big believer in it i know i know it's kind of yeah some people don't really pay much attention to it it's just you know throw on some shoes and then yeah. go for it the shoes play a major part a major yeah part. yeah and the terrain like I, yeah. if, if i maybe jogging in a park and there's a tile on that path i always jog on the verge yeah because of just that um, saturated yeah. element to be good. Be yeah. you can, you're getting a little bit of cushioning on the ground, yeah. aren't you? Rather yeah. than yeah. And there's also the fact of jogging up, jogging up and down like on the hills. Yeah. I like that, even though it's hard. Yeah. But your 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 knees and everything's okay. Yeah. Um, I always try to put my weight back when yeah. I'm going down. And I slow down yeah, the pace. Yeah. 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 But. Um, it's, it's great than rather than just jogging on a flat. On yeah, the definitely. I do. I get bored if it's just all flat. And then, you know, if you're constantly training on the flat, as soon as anything's a slight, even the slightest of incline, mm. you can't take it. Can you? When it, I did the Brighton Marathon a few years ago, and there was like a very small hill at the start. Can't have been more than say. 30 or 40 meters what you call a wake up hill <laughs> yeah yeah but there was like literally some people just went to start with, i don't do hills really? it was only like you know you're at the start of a marathon you must have been training a lot for this and they were just like nope don't do it just like categorically refuse to do it they're not serious no, that's it or just this self-respect yeah. though i don't thought yeah even you give it a go it's different by the mindset i think some i don't know like i actually in some way prefer running uphill it's like you just kind of double down and you just and as long as you've kind of got a good technique for doing it where you, you're keeping your cadence the same but you're not increasing like your you know your stride length you have to sort of reduce your stride length don't you mm -hmm. and you know you can sort of do it where your heart rate's not really changing at all from when you're running on the flat you just have to do it right don't you um but um yeah you know i i, I kind of prefer it some ways. What would be your tips to somebody who's considered considering getting into the running game? Uh, I'd say park run when it's back when things are back to you know being open again. I'd say go to park run because it's it is good to have a you know it, when it's something that's social. There's a social aspect to it. Then I think people are probably more likely to kind of maybe stick with it and just be like okay and it starts at nine which is not too early but it's you know it's early enough that you can just do it and then get on with your day you know it's even though people do race it it's not it's not as competitive as a race some people literally it's just a little fun run and some people walk it so there's all abilities there's loads of them all around the country mm -hmm. um i'd say i'd say that's a good thing to start with because i think a running club is a bit intimidating to just be like, right, I'm going to go and sign up for that if you just wanted to just get started. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's getting a bit, of, you know, you don't need much gear, do you? That's, that's the attraction, you know. Um, footwear, when it comes to footwear, yeah. Um, you know, you can get the different, the trail trainers, um, the, all the different, like New Balance. Yeah, there's, there's, oh, that's, that's the... Yeah. That's the overwhelming thing, I think, for people, isn't yeah. it? Just have the choice. I've seen those trainers with like um, blocks and they're real cushiony. They're like, oh, the, ho the hokers, the big like platformy ones. Yeah, they're, but they're full running though. But they're yeah, like, gym yeah. running, like a bit like uh, indoor. But I would rather use them running on tarmac mm. and thing than uh, like a. Even though they wear quite quickly. Yeah. Than rather than have a hard yeah. rubber. Right. Because I, 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 I believe in looking after my knees. Yeah, yeah. If you feel <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that, that, that right. will be a bit of a showstopper once they start to go, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, that's that is wise. In that, in that respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you say you've learned that you wish you knew when you started? Oh, that's a good question. Um, um, I think maybe. 
I mean, I suppose now it's it wouldn't have applied back then. So now I'd say like I would have taken a bit more of a scientific approach where I could you know record my times and my pace. But I suppose my interest in that has grown with the accessibility of the wearable tech and you know the, the price of it. So you know when I first got a GPS watch, it was expensive, mm -hmm. and I, now I can. For most of my shorter training runs, I'll just use my Apple Watch for mm. it. Um, so that it's, you know, it's like half the cost of my first watch. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'd probably that I'd like, you know, like to know a bit more. But maybe knowing a bit more about natural running and the foot strikes and stuff like that, because it took getting an injury for me to, to pay attention to that, get into it. And I'm not sure would it be as bad. I think I still would have. I'm not sure if it's made it more chronic, just pushing through it and not knowing about it before. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but yeah, maybe, maybe a bit of that, a bit of info about you know your technique, you know, your running style, rather than just going for it, possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, what's the impact you want to have on the world? Oh God, <laughs> that's a very philosophical question yeah well it's the last question yeah um, at the end of the journey I'd say well just you know live a good life then to the point where you know you're not causing much strife for others and I don't know I mean I'd like to kind of you know I think everyone is thinking about sustainability and not having too much of an impact on the planet but you know I think there's only so much people can do as individuals really and mm -hmm. you know but I yeah I try I try Try and eat less meat. <laughs> you know, I try. Okay. It just tastes so good. Uh, but one last quick question. Yeah. Do you do any other exercises to complement what you do, like swimming? Or uh, I do uh, rock climbing. Yeah, okay. I find between running and, and climbing, it's I feel balanced, and you know, I do a bit of yoga as well, just to help with with both. Um, but yeah, between that, I feel you know balance and they you know work well i've got the fitness for, for, for both then and stretches me out keeps me uh you know flexible well thanks a lot for that yeah yeah interested. right i'll do the i'll, I'll do the the, the, the uh elbow <laughs> <laughs> i thought you were going to shake my hand i thought it was old no <laughs>Ever considered investing in the continent with the fastest growing economy and population on Earth? The same continent that holds 30% of the world's known natural resources? Then listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories, where you will hear real investors with real stories from around the world share their experience of investing in Africa. We post Monday and Thursday at 10am.